So before we start on this, let me know in the comments what you think. Pass or fail? Thumbs up or thumbs down in the comments or just say pass or fail. Let me know what you think the outcome's gonna be and then we'll see at the end who was right and who was wrong. <laughs> So I don't have blue tack, but I do have one of these tiny little screwdrivers, which usually does the trick. There we go. So I'm gonna just take this socket off here, have a little look, see what's what. So as I expected, everything is in pretty good condition really all looks fine just to do a little check on the tightness of the connections yeah absolutely fine I mean they've put both CPCs in one sleeve There's nothing wrong with that I wouldn't do it that way but it's not like it's gonna fail it or something it's just you know not the best practice shall we say but in these kind of house bashing scenarios where people are building thousands of new build homes, a little thing like that can save a few seconds, which over a thousand houses can save quite a few hours of labor. So I kind of understand why they do it, even though I wouldn't recommend it and I wouldn't do it myself. I do hate these things though, these little screw covers. I don't think they add anything aesthetically really. I would just leave them out usually if I have a socket like that. So let's take a look at this light switch and see what's going on here. So two, two gang. Let me know in the comments if you know what brand of accessories these are. They look really rubbish quality to me. They look super cheap and cheerful. Um, I'm gonna look on the back now and see what they are, but if you know, before I take the cover off, extra bonus points. Uh, oh, they are, uh, they're Eaton ones actually. I'm quite surprised at that because I kind of Thought they looked a bit rubbish quality, but Eaton stuff's usually quite good quality. Let me know, have you ever used Eaton outlets, uh, like um, accessories before? I'd love to know. So this is interesting actually, they've done the um, connections for the switches. Here they've brought the neutrals to the switches, which is quite nice. So if ever they wanted to fit smart switches later on or do any kind of smart lighting, it makes it much easier because you've got a neutral at the switch. Um, everything's fine, they've sleeved it up. I would have used Wargos, they've used connector blocks, but again, there's, there's nothing wrong with that. Let's do a little um, tightness test on these, these connectors, and they're absolutely fine. So it's looking good so far, I must say, which is quite rare for uh, my EICRs. I usually end up getting these nightmare ones. So they obviously had some kind of contract with Eaton on this build to supply everything, not just the consumer unit, but also the accessories. But they just look a bit rubbish to me, these accessories. But I'm a bit of an accessory snob, to be honest. As you guys know, I usually go for MK, although I'm hoping to try the Hager Solista ones soon, because I've not tried those yet and everyone says they're quite good. Right, let's take a look at a couple of light fittings and see what's behind those. All 
Right, so this light is a bit loose. It's probably just not screwed on properly. Uh, a bit dusty, but again, looks fine. Switch wires are sleeved, earths are sleeved. They have twisted the earths together, if you can see that, which is just a little bit annoying again, but you know, house bashers. So that's fine, I'm happy with that. If I can get the cover back on. No. Um, sometimes there's a bit of a knack to these. down lights out and see what's going on with these. Try to do it without wrecking the ceiling. <laughs> yes, the usual suspects. Okay, so what have we got here? Right, wow. So these are green lighting, never heard of them. They do have a CE mark on them. They are IP65, so suitable for the bathrooms. Don't look to be great quality, but seven watts. Funny old transformers on these, they're absolute beasts. So I'm reckoning that these are the cheapest down lights they could possibly get. Um, and look, why? Why do they do that? That is so, you know, that's like, we always find this with down lights. People wire them like that. Probably because they don't leave enough space in here to do it easily on these cheap light fittings. Um, but let me know, how would you code this? Because it seems like kind of a minor thing really, but it's, you know, it's uh, single insulated conductors un unenclosed, which in my mind is a, a C2, but they're in a loft space, so they're not really accessible. Um, so it's a bit of a tricky one really, let me know, how would you code that? Right, so I've got my tester here. As you guys know, I use a Fluke 1664 FC. And I'm just gonna set it up for my R2 testing now using this long wander lead. So, what I do is get this test probe which has got a button on it so I can just go around and probe everything and, and check it. I set it to the R low setting and then I'll get this and connect this to the consumer unit end and we'll do some R2 testing. So I'll get my long wander lead and just connect one end to the earth bar here. Make sure it's got a good solid connection and then I just run off a load of this long enough for me to wander around. I mean, some people have suggested that I put it like, ah, it's difficult because you can't really hang it off the consumer unit. Otherwise I could put this end here and have the loose end at the other end, but it doesn't really work. So I always end up doing it this way. Ah. I hate it when it gets stuck in the wheel. That's it.
Right, so that should do. So I'll plug this end into the tester. And then, first things first, I've got to zero my leads. So. Good, so that's zeroed. And now it's just a case of walking around and just dabbing this onto everything and checking to see if there's earth continuity. Which, um, with the switches, is annoying because you can't get on the screw to test the switch back boxes, so you have to flick the little caps out again. So for a socket, this is easy. For these switches, I'm gonna to have to flick the caps out. Good. And then the same with this one. So 0 0.08 ohms is what I'm getting here. All of these points are pretty much the same reading. 0 0.08, 0 0.09, which is fine. That's a kind of low resistance that we would expect as it's quite close to the consumer unit. So I'm just gonna run round now and just do everything. I'm not gonna show you it because it's a bit boring, uh, but I'll let you know if I find anything interesting. So the R2 tests all checked out fine, which is great. So what I'm gonna do now is do ring continuity on these two ring circuits, just to make sure they are actually rings. So I'll just disconnect these conductors, pull them out a little bit so that I can get access to them. And I think yeah, that's good. So they've separated the CPCs on the ring circuits, which is really nice. Um, I was a bit worried about that because at the sockets, they haven't actually separated them. They've just like put them in the same sleeving. I'm just gonna zero out my leads again. And then we'll do phase. So we've got 0 0.41, 0 0.41, and 0 0.69, which is absolutely perfect. A uh, little bugbear I would say is that they've not doubled up the CPC conductors, which is um, a shame, but not the end of the world. At least we've got good readings. So, no broken ring so far. Although I'm still not quite sure what to do about this 40 amp breaker situation. I think probably I need to code it and just recommend that they change the breakers to 32 amps. Because 2.5, there's no way that they'll get away with it. I can't see how they could get away with it really in this situation, so I think it's a mistake. Uh, so let's do this ring circuit as well. This one's probably gonna be a higher reading because I think this is the upstairs one. So it should be a fair amount higher. They've got the, the numbering systems on these Eaton boards are a bit funny because the main switch is in the middle and then the RCDs are either side, it sort of confuses me. I'm used to everything being in a nice straight line. 
So, 0 0.51, so it is a bit higher, but not that much higher. 0 0.52. And 0 0.86. Fine by me. Okay, so next is insulation resistance tests. 